Peace, beautiful beings. Welcome back to More Than Asana. This is our fourth episode, and I am dedicating this episode to diving deeper into the yamas and niyamas. Now, I just want to have a disclaimer or some kind of just letting you know that this is something that I'm sharing through my own studies, but I haven't taken the time to necessarily master these in a way. I've definitely practiced these in my own daily discipline and I know that the yamas and niyamas is not necessarily a end destination type of conversation or experience but I did want to share what they were so you have a general understanding of what they are if this is your first time even hearing those terms and just knowing that um, those definitions can help you indicate where you may want to apply one of those or some of those aspects into your own life. To begin, um, I have my notes here so that I can kind of keep track of what I'm saying. If you see me looking down and everything, note taking, by the way, such a great habit to have so don't be hating on the note takers out here on youtube because this is a lot of information and we all learn it together okay so pretty much um the yamas and yamas with if you watch my previous video i kind of broke them down very briefly um to explain where they even come from and where the word or term asana comes from, according to Patanjali. So if you want to learn a little bit more about that background, go ahead and watch my previous video and learn more about that. But here we're going to break down a little bit deeper. The yamas and yamas come from something that we call Raja Yoga. And Raja Yoga is a mental science. Um, it takes into consideration the entire life of an individual. Their actions, their feelings, their emotions all things that pertain to the entire life of an individual. The yamas, let's just get right into it, um, are considered moral disciplines. So these are more in the sense of feelings and the subconscious and tapping into those areas, the emotional body of our um, being. They are listing out ahimsa, satya, Asteya, Brahmacharya, Brahmacharya, and Aparigrapha. And I'm going to write all these terms down in the description box below so that you can kind of know how to spell them and be able to look them up yourself if you want to dive deeper into one or many of them. So pretty much Ahimsa is the first and it pertains to nonviolence. That is in reference to nonviolence, not just in the physical sense of violent, I'm going to hurt this person and make sure that they feel it. No, it also pertains to nonviolent words because we all know that words can sometimes hurt way more than physical action. And then the other aspect is the nonviolence that you have towards yourself in terms of thought. Um, even if you're thinking something that is not, that it can cause harm towards another, our thoughts are what create this reality. This they can always manifest in the physical. If we start in the in the mental or the spiritual space, so having violence in your thoughts can also be, you know, detrimental towards. Um, that practice if you are trying to practice nonviolence and also nonviolence towards yourself in thought or action as well. Um, not harming your vessel, not doing things you know aren't good for you. Um, it's a practice, but you'll know those things that cause um, what you may deem as violence towards yourself. The next is satya, which is truthfulness. So we all know truthfulness is what it is truth is truth however there is also truth that each individuals have considering that we all live our own experience um, there is the ultimate truth that pertains to the collective as a whole but there are also individual truths that people have that leads to their own expression in life 
that does not necessarily mean what their truth is is wrong or right or if their truth is you know if it doesn't align with what your truth is that doesn't take away from that being their truth so this practice of satya helps people to embrace their own authentic truths in whatever way that they see fit whatever it is that is truth for them live in it because that's what source wants you to do <laughs> is to pretty much live in your truth and we all know there's laws to this universe and there are consequences and karma and all these things that are other levels of that truth but if you're living in your truth and you're living your authentic self then you're ultimately going to feel better about this life that you're living and then the third one is asteya which is non-stealing and that can be physical not stealing but it can also be not stealing people's ideas not stealing um people's energy um energy vamps are like legit <laughs> so um, you know, just not taking things that don't belong to you, um, whether it's, and, and I know that that can also be seen in very different ways because, you know, life, um, is, you know, inspiration. We all are inspired from each other. We all learn from each other. We all experience things through each other. So I don't necessarily mean on that level, but you'll know when you're taking somebody's idea. Like you'll know when that wasn't something that came from your own intuition. And you'll know when you're taking something physically and you know that, that, that you'll feel that that's not right. And if you don't feel that that's not right, then I mean, somebody might karma might let you know a lesson in that and hopefully um, practicing asteya will be your next step after that <laughs> the one i struggle with saying brat brat kmacharya please if anybody has you know how in school they would like break down words so that you could say it if anybody has the saying of that i'm gonna look it up after this video but feel free to put it in the comments because <laughs> I'm struggling. But this, um, I'm just going to say brach for short, has to do with cel celibacy or quote unquote self control. So a lot of people pertain this one specifically to celibacy because that is a high form of self control, um, especially during this generation um, when sex is such a high drive in people's lives. Um, but it also does have to do with just self-control in general. Um, if you feel yourself uh, indulging in things that you know are not good for you, just practicing having that self-control, practicing saying no to the things that you know are not true for you. And if it does pertain to living a celibate lifestyle, um, exploring why you're you're engaging in that, paying attention to the, the strength and energy that comes from that self-control. There's a lot of levels to that that can be explored and feel free to share what you experience if this is one of the yamas that you are um, practicing for yourself. And the last yama is aparigrapha. And that aparigrapha, <laughs> these are not I'm just letting you know that the next video we're gonna be talking about comedic yoga this is like so separate from what we're talking about now but these terms please do not crucify me for saying things incorrectly i am learning along just with you and would love to know how to say these things correctly <laughs> um but pretty much aparigraha it has to do with non-greed or non-hoarding so that also can pertain um and kind of be mixed up with the um, act of self-control because sometimes we can lose our control in terms of our material wealth, our assets, the things that we hold on to, um, but also when we're just holding on to energy that is no longer a part of this present life. If we're holding on to people, we're holding on to things, um, yeah, it can be a great practice to release those things into the world, release those energies and to just not um, feel like you don't have enough because you live in abundance. Your natural birthright is abundance. And to have greed means that your faith in that abundance is not present. And 
So letting those things go and starting new or clearing out old things, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, so definitely would recommend practicing that one. Now we're moving on to the Niyamas. Niyamas are du positive duties or positive observances that you have in the world around you. Um, so those listed are Sacha, Santasha, Tapas, Svariha, Svariyaha, and Isvara Pranidhana. And I probably should have reviewed how to say these before I came on, but it's okay. We in this. We in this together. <laughs> so, um, Sacha has to do with cleanliness. So just, you know, being clean in your vessel, being clean in your environment. Um, some people like to say that a cluttered room is reflective of a cluttered mind. And I think that, you know, it can reflect that a lot of the time. I'm not saying all the time that if you're dirty, you're having this chaos in your world. Some people have organized messes in their lives, you know, but um, having that cleansed energy, using water to cleanse the body, you know, all these things are beautiful um, practices to have to just ease and bring more peace into your space. The next one is Santasha, and that's contentment, feeling contentment in the world around you, observing when you feel that contentment in the world around you, and then observing that contentment and knowing what brought, brought it about. So maybe you can participate in those actions a little bit more to bring more contentment into your life. Also, there is tapas. And tapas, I feel like, is one of those uh, terms you hear in a yoga class pretty often when people want to incorporate the yamas and niyamas in. And when they refer to the tapas in class, they like to use poses that really fire you up. So make you feel heated, bring that fire into your belly, that burning sensation. And it does relate to um, what tapas is. It is that burning enthusiasm, that burning desire, that discipline, that drive, that, that fire energy. You know what it is. So tapas, you're building that up into your life, that discipline and that, that passion in, in your life. So um, observing where that comes into you, um, how, when you feel that in yourself. Svadhyaya, Svadhyaha is the study of self and texts. So this is one that I definitely practice heavily. And even though I don't know how to say it very well, I really try to apply this part of the niyamas into my life by you know, just observing myself and the way that I interact with those around me, observing um, other people and noticing just how they relate to those actions and feelings that I feel in my own life as well. And reviewing texts, especially spiritual texts, that have everything to do with how we maneuver in this world. And, you know, we are constantly changing, whether it's us as individuals, whether it's the environments around us, we're always changing. And to be able to observe those changes, to be able to observe our growth, to be able to read new texts and, and shift your perspectives based on those, not in a sense of like, oh, I'm being swayed in one direction or the other, but being open-minded enough to experience the truth of somebody else or or source expressing itself in a different way. I, I think that's a really beautiful practice to have. And it doesn't mean you have to agree with everything you read. It doesn't mean you have to agree with everything that you do when you're observing yourself either. It's just taking that observation of the self and noticing the things that you like and you don't like and noticing the things that relate to these texts that you do agree with. Are you living um, the life that you want to? Are you reading these new ways of living and applying them into your world and do you re still resonate with it? You know, That is something that is definitely going to take your entire life to, to practice. And if 
you're someone like me that is reading all different types of texts um, from different areas and avenues of the world, then you'll definitely have to study yourself in and observe yourself in um, receiving that knowledge. And so I love this one and would love to hear other people's experiences if they are practicing Svadhyahara in their own life. <laughs> And last we have Isvara Pranidhana, <laughs> which is contemplation of a higher power or surrender to a higher being. And that in itself has everything to do with your own truth. So once you've observed your truths, once you've read the religious texts, once you've experienced life around you, we're all doing all these things all the time, maybe some more than others, but being able to surrender to that knowing of there is something greater than us there is something bigger happening than our own that that we don't fully control maybe as a whole collective yes but even then surrendering to that power of whatever created this collective first whatever prime source that was the initial light the initial conscious the, the initial whatever it was that maybe we don't even know how or have a word for just knowing that that supreme being highest source is there and not only just knowing it and not only just accepting that but surrendering to it surrendering to this higher power and this flow of energy with faith and that is gonna look different for everybody in their lives. And to be able to experience that for yourself, but also respect everybody else's individual experience in that, I think is where we'll expand the most collectively. But that's everything. So thank you for listening and sticking around. And if you wanna learn anything else specific to this or specific to, um, Indian yoga philosophy or whatever else you are interested in please leave it in the comments feel free to reach out to me um, on my Instagram on because um, I don't think they have direct message on YouTube but feel free to reach out um, I would love to get to know you I would love to get to know your perspectives um, your own experiences dealing with the yamas and niyamas or if this is your first time hearing and if it doesn't make sense to you at all i want to hear it all <laughs> so thank you for being here again please don't forget to subscribe please don't forget to like and share with anybody that you think may be interested in a video like this and i'll be seeing you again soon peace